that we've got uh, such an esteemed panel to have a conversation which is so relevant today because we've all seen 2021, 2000, actually 2020 is something that came and went and we said it's over and then came 2021. Uh, so the HR world has changed. HR, CHROs have become BCP managers, they've become health managers. And one more thing that the CHROs have become are, mm -hmm. are, are talent managers with, um, with upskilling employees in the talent ecosystem particularly in today's world where you see that uh, the talent market is so buoyant. So if we want to continue to keep the, the employer brand up and active, it becomes very important that we provide that learning uh, ecosystem as uh, HR folks to employees so that they continuously understand uh, what learning means. And more and more, actually more so, they should there should be a pull for learning more than the push that the organizations have been forced to do so far. So in this context, I think that the, that some of the things that I take away that really changed, um, that the pandemic changed for us is that it brought a certain tailwind to the learning function because everybody was talking about upskilling. Everybody was talking about staying relevant in the market. Therefore, uh, the no shows in learning programs, for example, saw a significant dip. We saw new learning formats, new learning deliveries that came along. And that's, that's what interestingly brings us to the conversation topic today, which really talks about um, immersive technologies in learning. The world is definitely heading towards uh, the online virtual world of metaverse. Tech giants like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft have already started working in this particular space. And metaverse is the new keyword. Uh, Microsoft, for example, is working on its own platform called Mesh, which will incorporate virtual experiences into Microsoft Teams. Having said that, let me just take a step back and uh, break down the phase immersive technology and focus on the word immersive here and its relevance to learning. The Cambridge definition of immersive says to surround the audience so that they feel completely involved in it. Well, for us as a e-learning company catering to both students and enterprises, anything that helps the learners with all the information and resources they need for the learning to happen and for them to excel in that training is immersive technology. With the end result being learning outcome, we should look at immersive technology as an enabler. For example, uh, in the manufacturing space, by simulation of real life cases, immersive technologies can teach learners how to perform certain mechanical tasks, improve time to competency, reduce on the job errors. In digital native companies, which is where the hub of tech talent today is wanting to work, a software engineer aspires to be a data scientist. Immersive technology here could maybe give him or her the virtual labs and practice environments. Simple things like driving engagement, right? right being instructor-led, Zoom posts, breakout rooms, keeping camera on, gamification, mobile apps to check for class schedules, social learning. All of this in this current context of e-learning and virtual learnings contributes to immersive technology. The question when we design a curriculum for our clients, what is the learning outcome? and what aspects of leveraging technology will drive engagement and participation. That for us is immersive uh, technology. I think immersive technology's um, impact on our lives are far reaching uh, beyond uh, just the learning modules. And since I come from the logistics segment, I can uh, vouch for that because immersive technology or augmented reality or extended reality, whatever you name it, uh, we have seen the application that it has on the e-commerce and the logistics segment. And uh, because, because for the last uh, two years or so, since the pandemic has set in, and the term new normal has come uh, come into our lives. We have seen a lot of changes and it was the technology which actually helped us going. And the second thing which helped the entire globe moving was the logistics. So the logistics segment had had a huge application on the immersive technology. And it, it was one of the, uh, I would say, the very first adopter of this technology through the e-commerce. Today, you go to any online shopping, you will see a 3D version, you will see a 4D version. You can you can al almost get a touch and feel of the fabric. You can almost get a touch and feel of the cosmetic. You can almost get a touch and feel of anything that you are, you are actually going to buy. But to make the team actually um, 
upskilled or upgraded to that level of technological advancements i think a huge amount of work has also been done in the back end by the learning team and by the by the external uh, third party uh, learning providers who actually helped us to create various apps uh, and also uh, educate the team to use those apps first uh as an internal customer before we actually gave it to the external customer and in in, in our segment in the logistics segment uh in the e-commerce field uh, in the online shopping field you will find ample adoption of of immersive technology both from an internal team perspective and from an external customer perspective so i think it has now become the way of life for for us in in the business so it's 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 now become business as usual i think uh other day i was reading uh an article where we see that the footfall is much higher or the the hit ratio is much higher in an online shopping portal than in any um any uh brick and mortar shop so it it only talks about the success of the immersive technology if i look at my experience and, and and all of us in the learning development space have always spoken of that you know if your learning is maximum when you hear see and do when the combination is that um and starting from here to see then and doing uh, sort of situation uh immersive technology you know is almost there uh, you know to uh, to get you there where you can hear see and do um but at the same time um, in there are certain you know they would be although it's a great technology it 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 helps you and especially in this covid time where people you had to reach out people things of that sort it was very important but uh, if you were doing um, you know i'm just saying is there are certain sets of training like sales training it will it will be a great help for example if people are doing product related sales training in, in you know in financial products where you have agents which do that and you, you know immersive technology will be a step ahead of animation and videos and things of that sort so uh, that is a great thing uh, coming down to hr there are many uses but when you come to basically where you're building you know building teams building managers you know, creating managers creating leaders uh, where lots of coaching feedback um, you know where you have personal you know connect and and uh, is important that's where you know it would go it will be there to some extent not to the full you know it won't go you know will not cover the nine yards for sure um, so if i if i look at uh, you know uh, sports is a great area where immersive technology would be of great use if you look at when i see my you know kids playing the you know uh, virtual games of soccer epl uh, you can you know the entire strategy and everything you can work on it and and, and that's that's a it's it's a great tool uh, same in when leadership uh, if there's a leadership program on strategy that's again immersive technology will be a great tool uh, but if i'm looking at uh, behavioral uh you know corrective behavior um giving them role play anything that has role play in it uh, immersive technology is is won't uh be as a, a effective impactful which is there what would be the corporate definition so to say in india and i'm localizing this of uh, immersive technologies it would be amplifying live experiences and that's exactly what what uh, shri krishna from hero wide was also talking about right how do we make sure that we amplify live experiences how do we learn uh without being in a classroom but having the exact flavor of the classroom uh and having those resources and those and the spare networks being disposable to you without having the touch and feel of having another human being next to you and that's what we all aiming to do right um so what can we where does it work it works in every industry uh, uh what are the competencies you can target you can target all three competency types and i'm speaking very broadly right now um um are there hitches to this of course there are hitches to it uh you know traditionally uh, look at how how we've all grown up uh, and, and, and been educated we've not been educated in an immersive way and now we're typically pushing a tough pill down the throat of our employees saying hey we have immersive uh, learning experiences at our disposal why don't you try them and we've been fighting this battle for the last 20 years i'm 38 years old and i got exposed to this uh, you know at a young age of 18 19 when e learning programs started taking shape in in india at least and it started off with compliance related programs and then it went to soft skills and now 
We're trying to teach uh, leadership competencies via e-learning programs. So there's some merit to what we do. That the 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 entire uh, meat of this pudding boils down to uh, you. You have to be very specific with the teams and the and the organizations and the industries that you're dealing with. Uh, the, in India, unfortunately, I've been on the other side of the table developing uh, these technologies, implementing learning programs, and it's monkey see, monkey do. You know, uh, we see an organization doing something which is fantastic. Uh, we try and bring that on board without actually understanding what is. Do, do our people really need this? Uh, you know, it's great to have a sales training program uh, teaching. Uh, you know, uh, in in the BFSI sector specifically through e-learning in a, through e-learning module and having all the tools at your disposal. But any data on this planet, in, in, uh, sorry, any data from this district in India will tell you that e-learning consumption is still not at the standards in terms of how we're investing in e-learning today. So the take on e-learning and immersive technology, as we are, we are referring to it in our discussion today, uh, has, a, has needs requires deeper thought. It requires deeper engineering. It, it requires organizations like Eurowire to play a bigger role because they're specific about the offerings that they bring it onto the table, right? A skill software, a hero wired. Vis -vis, uh, what we end up doing is we take a paintbrush and we try and paint the entire canvas with that, with that with the same paint. So I think responsibility is, is key. Accountability is key because uh, these things uh, can, can create terrible roadblocks in, 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 in the learner's mind and create huge disconnects, which you may find yourself uh, you know, coming back from. So the word the word that I'm going to leave you with is 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 caution. I can see most of the colleges these days, the medical colleges these days, started to use immersive technology to train students uh, for the anatomy sessions, uh, which was they used to do with the real bodies those days. Right now, it's it's no more. It's all they go through in detail. They'll exactly fix and teach students where exactly is the issue, which tissue, which muscle, which nerve, etc. Much more clearer than what they used to see in in the in the real anatomy classes so so it has evolved to to, to that level and significant amount of investments have, have taken place uh if, if you look at if, if you ask me a question um is india too early for it i think it, it is not because uh, um we were not the first country uh which which started to use mobile phones there are many other countries which started to use mobile but we are the country per capita mobile usage is highest one of the highest in the world we are the top two in the world next to uh, after China, right? And similarly, uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, if somebody had told us saying that, you know, uh, no more classroom training, it's only e-learning, nobody would have believed it, right? And then say, what, what, what's the point in training when you're not in the classroom? And now when you tell people to go back to classrooms and then do the e-learning methodology, I, nobody has time for it. And it's only the trainer will be standing in the classroom and, and you will not find any uh, professionals are coming and even if they come, uh, they will be coming to chit chat and do anything. So it's a, it's a, convenience has become the the buzzword, um, and and uh, and immersive technologies has taken convenience to the to the next level altogether. Uh, having said that, the challenges that we have in this uh, uh, in the immersive technology uh, is there are two challenges. One is uh, uh, the uh, mass adoption, how much we adopt to these technologies as there are still new conceptual aspects like 3D, audio, and, and go further. And the second important thing is miniaturization. What I mean by miniaturization is currently it is with the limited set of people with the with, with a good amount of investment. In the when when you reach the economies of scale, uh, the entire technology will become more miniature and uh, it will become less cost uh, from effectiveness point of view. And the usage will become uh, uh, massive, right? And it start it will start reaching uh, the masses. In a country like India, when it starts to reach the masses uh, with the with the with the technology is being in the hands of people, what will happen is it will it will it will have a changed socio development and and a thought process of people. Uh, people's behavior, uh, the way they interact, the way they learn, the way they experience the world would completely change. For the last one and a half years, we have seen a lot of people moving to, to digital. Uh, however, you know, with normalcy coming back, uh, people have a tendency of going back to the old ways of working. So, for example, in the LND field also, you know, where a lot of people were actually coming together on Zoom, MS Teams and uh, you know, digital learning uh, uh, was actually uh, at its high. 
uh, suddenly you find you know line managers coming back and saying that that oh all this is fine uh, can we also have a classroom training program so i think a mindset shift is very much required because we need to pick up from the crisis and if we have not picked up anything then i think we are we are letting the crisis go waste uh, that's one secondly uh, as you know one of my co-panelists uh, mentioned earlier uh, i think the cost factor at this point of time could be a little overwhelming and especially for larger organizations uh, uh, you know, to go in for this kind of a solution, the investment could be on the higher side. And, uh, you know, uh, companies may or may not be, uh, you know, having an appetite to go in for that kind of investment. Though my firm belief, and it's my personal belief, that uh, this would, uh, you know, come in much faster than what we expect. Just like, uh, you know, the telephony example somebody was giving. So we were in a voice market traditionally, and the only thing that was changing was the tariff right from 16 rupees to you know one pesa per second uh, and suddenly the digital wave came in and it came in so fast uh, that uh, you know uh, it was a matter of time when actually a, a, a large population had moved on to digital piece and india as you know being the lo lowest tariff point uh, tariff point you know uh, the consumption is very very high uh, 